Hi students, welcome to Year 12 Chemistry and Module 5 on Equilibrium and Acid Reactions. This is video number 11 and we're going to be looking at the equilibrium constant. Up till now what we've been able to do is to identify and apply Le Chatelier's principle in order to know what's happening when a system that's uh, in equilibrium experiences a change. Now the uh, changes that we've looked at so far and the consequent response of the systems have been very much qualitative responses. It shifts to the left, it shifts to the right. We have an increase in the concentration of the product or an increase in the concentration of the reactants. But what we want to do now is to make it a more quantitative process. We want to actually start to put some numbers on our equilibrium systems. And in, in order to do that, we need to introduce uh, a couple of new concepts. The first is the um, reaction quotient and the second thing is the equilibrium constant and what we can do is we can have a look at a system that is in equilibrium and what I've given you here is just a standard um, uh, four component equilibrium system two reactants uh, over here and two products over here and the actual substances themselves are listed by A, capital A, capital B, capital C, capital D, and then the coefficient in front uh, by the lowercase uh, of the same letter. What we're going to be looking at is we can look at the ratio of the concentrations of the products to the reactants and produce what's called the reaction quotient. So this symbol here denotes concentration. And so if we divide the concentration of the products by the concentration of the reactants, then we will end up with some value uh, of Q, the reaction quotient. Now, as a reaction proceeds, if we start with reactants and no products, then the reaction will proceed and this value of, of the reaction quotient will change. And it will continue to change as reactants form products. This will continue to occur until the number of products starts to reach a point where they are starting to reform the reactants. And at some point, the system will stabilize. At equilibrium, we will have a certain concentration of reactants and a certain concentration of products that won't be changing. We know that dynamic equilibrium says that the reactions will still be proceeding, but the rates will be equal and therefore there will be no further change in the concentration. At equilibrium, this reaction quotient becomes the equilibrium constant, and it's denoted by the symbol uh, capital K and a subscript EQ, the equilibrium constant. For the reaction one above, the equilibrium constant, or the um, uh, way of calculating the equilibrium constant, can be given by the equation that's shown here. So the two products are C and D, so we need to determine their concentration at equilibrium. And for each of them, we need to raise them to the power of the particular um, coefficient at the front. We multiply those together and then we divide them by the two reactant uh, concentrations, each of those two raised to their power. One of the most important things that we need to be aware of is that the equilibrium is constant for a given temperature. Temperature, as we'll see later on, is the only factor that can actually change the value of the equilibrium constant. So here's an example. We have here dichromate ions and chromate ions, and they are in equilibrium uh, with uh, hydrogen ions and water. We can find the equilibrium quotient by uh, the products concentrations divided by the reactant concentrations. To do that, the products are here. Here are the products. Now, one of the important things about the product here, so we need the concentration of chromate, uh, dichromate ions. Now, we would multiply that by uh, water, but I'll come back to that in a moment because water is a liquid. And then we're going to divide that by the reactant. So here we have uh, the chromate ions, CrO42 minus, and this one we're going to have to 
square because it's got a 2 at the front of it. And then we're going to multiply that by concentration of hydrogen ions, which is also going to be squared. One of the important things to remember when we're looking at this is that 2H plus is the same as H plus plus H plus. So if we've got the concentration of each of these uh, and then we're putting them into here, then we would just multiply them. So you can that's why the coefficients work that way. Um, what I did, what I didn't um, deal with is the fact that because water is a liquid and this is also true for solids is that they have a certain density, that is a certain number of grams per mole and as a result of grams per litre. And as a result of that, the concentrations are not going to change. So effectively, we could divide uh, both sides by the water here and we just divide a constant by a constant, which is still a constant. So in actual fact, in this particular expression, the, we don't take into account the concentration of the water. A couple of little things that are important. Obviously, if the equilibrium uh, quotient is equal to the equilibrium constant, then we have reached equilibrium. If the equilibrium constant is larger than the, uh, sorry, if the reaction quotient is larger than the equilibrium constant, then that means that the number on the top is large. And therefore, what we want to do is we need to drop that overall number in order to bring it down, which means the products are going to uh, reverse and we're going to favour uh, the reactants. So uh, the reaction is going to uh, move more quickly towards the left. And likewise, if uh, the e reaction quotient is lower than the equilibrium constant, then that means that the number on the top needs to become bigger, which means we need to shift in the other direction. And therefore, this is going to favour the products and shift to the uh, right. This just gives you a bit of a quick overview and we will have a look at some calculations and go into a little bit more detail and obviously do a few questions to practice in class. Thanks for watching.